see. You've got to consider their condition. When somebody snaps with an inappropriate response, it, it ought to tell you that something's going on down beneath the surface. And my wife is really a good one for looking beneath the surface. She's spiritually mature enough to think, wonder what's going on in their world that they would respond in such a way. Our emotional response is just to quickly snap back, right? But what would happen if we would slow down enough and we would stop and we'd say, look, I just want to consider what's going on. What's the condition of this person? We watched a movie on Wednesday here. How many of you know, that was a great movie, by the way. I enjoyed it. That was a great Christian movie. I highly recommend the movie I can only imagine to whoever uh, would like to see it. But in that movie, there's, a, there's a, a, a dad who's very abusive to his son. And uh, even as the movie was happening, I was thinking to myself, I wonder what made that dad so angry. What was the hurt that had happened to him in his life? What was the dream that he had that he went for and it didn't come to pass? What was the pain that he had experienced that caused him to become so angry? And how many of you know that everybody's got a history like that? And I'm not saying that it justifies him being abusive. No, sir. Beating his son and treating his son like that. No, sir. None of those things are right or correct. How many know there's consequences? when we don't respond appropriately, right? There are consequences when we allow our anger to gain control over us. But as believers, what we need to be able to do is simply step outside and look at the situation and say, hey, what's causing this person to respond like that? Amen? And that's why uh, we, 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 we need to do that because something is causing it. And what happens is that Generally, people are putting up defensive walls, and they're only thinking about themselves, right? And so we've got to think about that as well. And I know that looking at somebody's condition and considering their condition is a very spiritual, difficult thing to do. How many of you think that that's, that that's true? It's not easy to go, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop being angry. I'm going to stop responding, and I'm going to scoot over here, and I'm going to think about what's this person, what's causing them to react that way? But how many know it's almost impossible if you don't have the Lord, right? But this is what the Scripture says. Paul said this in Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 5, he said this. Don't be selfish. Don't think only about your own affairs, but be interested in others too. Your attitude should be the same that Jesus Christ had. Oh, aren't you glad for Jesus? He didn't think of himself. He looked at our condition. Our condition was that we were all messed up. We were in sin. We were totally, we, we, we needed a Savior. So he said, I'm not going to think about my condition. I'm going to step outside of myself. And I'm going to look at their condition. I'm going to do what they need instead of what I need. Come on. And, and let me tell you something. We're to have that same attitude that Jesus had. Come on. And it's not easy. In fact, it's almost impossible if you're don't have the Holy Spirit, but I believe it is possible to actually do that if you spend time with the Lord and you say, God, give me ears to hear what you're saying to me. Amen. Give me, let, let my spirit be receptive. Let me be open to that. And let me tell you what happens. Usually it doesn't change the person that has the condition. You want to know who it changes? It changes you. Come on. Is there anybody in the room that's open enough to say, yeah, there's moments in my life when I need the Lord to come and change me, lest the old Bob get out. Hello? Lest, you know, lest that old man, you know, that was supposed to be dead and crucified to sin, lest he get out. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so what God does is when we're praying that way and we're believing that way, what happens is that we get changed and he fills us with compassion and he fills us with, with, with grace and he fills us with love and understanding and that helps us to respond in a better way. Come on, do I have a hand of praise for the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And then we get to the last letter, E. We've got to embrace God's plan for peace. Right, I've got a few little bullet points here. We're just going to hit on them really quickly today. And the first one is this. You've got to pray. Got to pray. Let me tell you something. I believe in prayer. Amen. Don't you? 
Get up and pray in the morning. Go to before you go to bed at night. Pray. Amen. Just pray. Just be with the Lord. And, and, and Scripture says this, James 1.5, if you need wisdom and if you want to know what God wants you to do, I like this, ask Him. He'll gladly tell you. He'll gladly tell you and He will not resent your asking. But what happens usually when we're upset with people, who do we go to? We talk to people about people. Am I right? Do I got any witnesses in the house? We talk to other people about the people. Listen, stop talking to other people and start talking to God about it. Start saying, God, I need to know what to do. You show me what to do. You give me the right spirit inside. Okay, you got to pray. Then you got to apologize. I mean, no, that's a part of the peace plan. Powerful words in the English language. Let me give them to you. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I made a mistake. Forgive me. Sometimes it's even appropriate to apologize for stuff you didn't even do. Who's ever done that? Hello. Okay. Proverbs 28 says, Anyone who refuses to admit his mistakes can never be successful. But if he confesses and forsakes them, he gets another chance. And let me tell you, it's a powerful thing. You say, well, it's mostly their fault in this conflict. Listen, if it's only 2% of your fault and 98% theirs, listen, just accept and say, listen, I was wrong in that. And don't tell them I was wrong in the 2% and you, were, you had the 98%. No, just to confess your part that was wrong. Apologize. Am I right? Come on, that's good. And then sometimes we've got to learn how to lovingly and tenderly confront. Not like exploders do. Am I right? We've got to lovely, lovingly and tenderly confront. And you know, there's a great passage in the book of Matthew that tells us that if we come to church, we come to the temple, and, and uh, we, we have our offering and are going to offer it, that, you know, and we realize, man, there's something between me and a, or a brother and a sister. I better leave my offering there and then go and make it right. Right? And that's because God says relationships are incredibly important in our life, right? And let me tell you, it, it's, 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 it's something that we got to slow down. If you're an exploder, you've got to slow down, way down, maybe take a walk, wash the car, do some stuff, get a little of that energy out, sit down, think about it, get calm, right? And then you confront with grace and truth, not with rage and anger. Come on. Grace says this. Here's what Grace says. Grace says in this relationship, you're valuable to me. I care about you. I, I want this. I, I, our relationship is important. And then truth says, this is what's going on on the inside of me. This is how I feel. And, you know, those of us who are, are impl imploders, you know, you might, you might say, it's, it's just, you know, it's just easier for me to say I'm sorry and get out of it than, than to just to confront but how many of you know that, that that doesn't work either because pretty soon you keep stuffing it down and stuffing it down and pretty soon you put so much down inside of you, you actually then you explode and that's not good, right? So what we've got to learn how to do is just sit down and say, look, this is what's happening to me. And, you know, and you can say, use I feel statements. Talk about yourself. Don't say, this is what you do, you rascal, you, you did this and you did that and you, no, no, you say, this is how I feel. I feel devalued. I feel hurt. I feel pain. Come on, how many of us, this is good uh, practical stuff this morning. Come on. Amen. We've got to learn how to gradually confront and then we've got to learn how to forgive, right? Forgiveness is huge. It's huge. You've got to learn how to forgive. You know, there's some people that they have a big old long list of things and grievances. And let me tell you, every single little argument then becomes about 77 things. And this is number 78 on the list. And they start rehearsing every little... Come on. That's not what believers do. Come on. Believers forget. Believers forgive and intentionally let it go, right? And the book of Colossians tells us to remember the Lord forgave you, so you've got to forgive others. And I know for some people they're like, oh, that's so hard. It's so hard. How I many forgiveness costs something? It costs Jesus something to be able to forgive us. 
It cost him a lot of pain on his back, carrying him the cross, going to, to Calvary to die. It cost him something, and it's going to cost you something to forgive. And sometimes it's hard, and a lot of people think, well, I, I just don't feel like I can do it. Let, can I let you in on something? Forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is a decision. I'm telling you that Jesus Christ himself didn't feel like, oh, yay, I get to go to the cross and I'm going to die. In fact, you want to know what he said the night before? He got down and he said, oh, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. He didn't want, but he said, but nevertheless, nevertheless, not my, my will, but your will be done. And so, so let me just say, it's not about a feeling, it's about a decision. You make a decision, you say, I am going to forgive that person. And what that means is that you're not going to act as their judge, jury, and executioner. You're letting them off the hook. It's not saying they never hurt me. It's not saying what they did wasn't wrong. It's none of those things. It's just saying, I'm letting it all go into God's hands, and I'm not going to worry about it anymore. And disconnecting yourself from it. Come on. It's spiritually healthy to forgive. Come on. Give the Lord a big hand of praise today. And here's what happens, all right? We're almost done. Here's what happens. When you forgive, when you forgive and make that decision, sure enough, the next day there's a consequence that you didn't think about that that came again. And you say, well, I, I forgive him for the consequence. And then the next day there's another consequence and you forgive him for that. And you keep forgiving them. And every time the devil brings it up into your mind and says, you know what? You need to be angry about that. You need to be upset about that. You say, I've made a decision to forgive them. And that's under the blood of Jesus. And I'm not going to forgive And let me tell you something. If you do that long enough, pretty soon the feelings will follow. Come on, somebody. God wants us to forgive. In fact, the book in Matthew, in Matthew 6 Jesus said this, he said, if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Wow, that's an incredible verse. Incredible verse. It's so important that we forgive. And then there's also one other step, and that is that we need to be reconciled with God before this all can happen. If you want to have peace in your relationships, if you want a peace plan to work, if you say, I want to be healthy and strong emotionally and be able to handle anger and be able to handle conflict, let me tell you something. You can't do that in and of yourself on your own. Most of us can't, right? Maybe there might be some that can, but most of us need Jesus. Is there anybody in the room that says, I need God. I need Him in my life every day. I need to be reconciled with God because let me tell you something if I'm not right with God I'm not going to be right with man when I was in Bible college our Bible uh, our, our college uh, president Dr. Don Argue he would always do, I don't know how many times he, he must have done it 500 times over a four year period of chapel services but he would do this he would say if this relationship isn't right, speaking of the, like the cross, right? The relationship between you and God isn't right. Chances are your relationship with others isn't going to be right as well. That's really, really good theology. Come on. You've got to be right with the Lord before you're right with others. But here's what I believe, that God's going to give us the strength that we need. I just speak blessing over this congregation today. I speak the anointing of the Spirit over this congregation today, that you're going to make it and you're going to be strong. Even in the midst of conflict and anger, guess what? You're going to handle it right. Amen. Would you stand with me today?